So I'm going to break down multiplying radicals into two or three different videos. The first one, we're just going to cover some basics, so let's review our vocabulary. So when we see this expression, the little number in the little crook of the radical symbol is called the index. The pro plural of index, by the way, is over here, indices. That's how we write, write more than one. The number underneath, which I write generically as an A, is called the radicand. So just so we know all our vocabulary. Okay, so let's work through some examples, and I'll try to hit all of the things that might come up. So first off, square root of 2. Oh gosh, there's something already. There isn't an index written, right? So when the index is missing, that's the understood 2. So these both have an index, a little 2 that we don't typically write there. So square root of 2 times square root of 7. The indices are the same. When that's the case, we write a brand new radical over here, same index, 2. I'm not going to write it. And then we just simply multiply the two radicands together. And we would write square root of 14. The next example, okay, let's read it, square root of 5 times, write the parentheses together, 3 times the square root of y. Ah, so remember all of our uh, properties of multiplying and adding. So the commutative law of multiplying, we can go in any order. So I could write that 3 times the square root of 5 times the square root of y. Bring that 3 out in front just so that it doesn't get in the way two radical factors, both with the same index, 2. That means I can combine those radicands underneath one radical. 3 stays out in front. One radical to hold the product of 5 times y. Okay. So here is an example where my index is not 2. This time it's a 3, but notice they are both 3's. That means everybody can go together. Be careful when you write your answer. This time, right, it's not a square root. It's not the 2 we had before. It's a cube root. The index is 3. So that's when we have to write it in. 2 is the only one you don't have to write in. Any other index, you have to put it in your answer. So I have the cube root of, and again, we just multiply our radicands together. 7 times x times y. Okay. So my last example, oh, before we get to the tricky one, remember now, radicals can be written with the symbol or with a fractional exponent. And when you have your fractional exponent, the denominator is the index. So these both have an index of 2. So maybe you would go through a step where you write this, instead of x to the 1 half, you would rewrite it as a radical, square root of x. And the 6y, it's in parentheses, the whole thing is raised to the 1 half power. That means the whole thing goes under a radical. Index is 2. I'm not going to write it anymore. But now I'm multiplying two expressions. They have the same index. I can combine everything under the same one, and then I'll just rewrite it so it looks more natural. Square root of 6xy. Okay, so let's take a look at that tricky one. Uh -huh. So now I have two tricky things going on here. Three tricky things, things actually. So the first one, x to the one-third, so we have to translate that to a radical probably. So remember the denominator is your index. So that first expression would be, so x is my radicand, that base is your radicand. Denominator is my index. This one, notice I didn't do anything about it up here. When it's one, we don't have to. We're going to have to over here on the next one. Okay, so now I'm done with that. There's its radical version. So let's take a look at 6 times y to the 2 thirds. There are a couple of things going on there. First, notice how it differs from the last example. In the last one, the entire 6y was wrapped in parentheses. The entire 6y was raised to the 1 half power. So the entire 6y went under the radical. On this one, I don't have any parentheses. So let's think about how that changes. Okay. So your exponent is only attached 
to the y, and the 6 just hangs out in front. So it'll be 6 and then a radical. Okay, so there's one of the tricky things. The y is my radicand. Right? It has the x, it's the base for your exponent. The 3, the denominator of your exponent, is your index. And the numerator, right, remember it's been 1 all along, but now it's a 2. Well, that's going to be a power I raise the y to. Okay, so now we've actually just rewritten it. We have to simplify. So now I'm multiplying like indices. There they are. Both have an index of 3. That means they can go together under the same one. The 6 hangs out in front. It still doesn't get underneath. Draw your radical symbol, cube root, can't ignore it if it's not a 2, x, y cubed.